Hey folks, Longhorn Lester here. And uh, today I'm doing a follow-up video to one that I posted this morning. Um, it's about Tex and the possibility of moving him and his lady friends, his daughters, his family, to his very own pasture. Now, there's been a lot of questions in the comments today about why don't I just build a really solid, heavily enforced, reinforced fence down between my dad's property and the spot that we run uh, our cows in just to kind of make it where Tex and Billy can't, you know, fight through it. And that would save us all of that money and having to invest in new property. Now, the answer to that is very simple, yet a bit complicated. So if you'll join me this morning, I'm going to take you on a little ride down to the back and we're going to talk about it. I'll explain it all to you and it will all make a whole lot better sense. So thank you all for joining in and let's take a little ride. so what I've done is I've driven down there's my place over there now folks what you probably don't know because I don't think we've ever talked about it is that my property line stops right there at my fence that's the end of, that's the back of my property right there now the only reason that I am able to leave this gate open and allow my cows and horses to come back here is because this land here that belongs to my uncle Raleigh and Aunt Joanne this is their land, and since their kids don't live here, they've allowed me to run my cows and horses here to help maintain their pastures. So if it weren't for the cows and the horses and the donkeys that come back here and graze, even though they haven't done a real good job because they, I, I feed them plenty, uh, this would just grow up. It would grow up in no time with weeds and just all kinds of stuff that would take over your land. I think you've seen in other videos how bad it can get. So Uncle Raleigh, Aunt Joanne, allow me to run my cows and horses and donkeys back here to help maintain their pastures, but it's not my land. <clears throat> so because this is not my land, and I have offered Uncle Raleigh and Aunt Joanne uh, a kind of a payment plan to buy this property. Uh, they, they do not want to sell because my Uncle Raleigh already has it written into his will that when he passes, this land goes to his children. It's going to be divided up three ways to his children, and that is his final wishes. And so there's no if, ands, or buts around that. So if you're saying, well, Lester, why don't you just wait and talk to Uncle Raleigh's kids about selling? I haven't waited. I've already talked to Uncle Raleigh's kids about that. And two out of the three have no intentions of selling ever. And I said ever. This is Morrow land, and even though they don't live here now, they don't know what the future holds. They don't know what the future holds for their own kids. And so they do not, as of now, want to sell this property. Uh, so then, so that's one reason why I don't invest and just build this fence here, because this is not my property to build a fence on. It would be a short-term fix. It'd be a short-term fix. And what I would be doing is spending thousands of dollars to build a really nice, solid fence for someone else to one day own. And that's not financially feasible. That's not smart. That's just not smart on my half, on my behalf. But there is a second reason. So as you guys know from previous videos, because we have two mature bulls who are intact on each side of the fence, a bull, bulls will fight through a fence. And anyone who has cattle who live adjacent to someone else with a mature bull knows that these kind of fences will not last. The bulls will fight right through them. Guys, this is a simple T-post that is driven in the ground a couple of feet. But even me, a 200-pound man, can take this post, and if I apply some force, I can push it over. Even though it's, it's some kind of steel, if I push it enough, 
it will finally break. You can break these posts at the bottom. That happens all the time once they get oxidized and begin to rust. They do get frail and they do break. Wooden posts are the same way. You can buy a nice wooden post and you can concrete it in the ground. But over time, guys, they do get weak. And when you take a two-ton bull pushing on one side, another two-ton bull pushing on another side, it doesn't take long for those posts, even with concrete, to can push over and sometimes break out the bottom. And so what you would have to do is build not just one fence, you'd have to build two. It's kind of, I joke, it's kind of like North and South Korea. They have these two borders and there's a small DMZ, a no man's land, if you will. So what me and dad have over here, I come by and built this fence. My dad has his existing fence and what we have in the middle is no man's land, the DMZ. And that, that extends the length of the property. So in saying so, if I was to come by and even if I did and was able to afford to build one of those kind of fences all the way down, it wouldn't take long now for having two bulls this close to each other to begin to fight through the fence. And that, that so-called fence would not last long. I think that you have now now if you want to say well hey how about a welded fence guys I don't know if you understand how far and how long that welded fence would have to go but I can promise you one thing it would cost more to hire a tractor to clear out the quarter of a mile to the river it would also require that welded fence to have bags of concrete on every post then you'd have to hire the welding crew to come by with the pipe to weld so-called fence. And so I'm afraid that that's not feasible, but nonetheless, it's not even my property to do that to anyway. It would be foolish for me to do all of that, spend all of that money to land that's going to one day belong to somebody else. As of right now, my babies are able to come on this pasture and enjoy it. Uh, the trade-off is that I, my animals keep the pastures cleaned off. You also know that I come by every uh, winter and I burn off the pasture in a controlled burn to get rid of all the debris and the junk and then I'll bring the brush hog and mow the pastures down to keep this part of the pasture for amazing grazing. We also have pastures in the back that's for amazing grazing and so for now it keeps my babies nice and fat and healthy but unfortunately this is this is temporary and so I know what you're saying um, Lester wait what about some of your dad's land. Why don't you ask your dad for some of his land? Well, the only problem with that is that my dad runs too many cows. Whereas I told you I'd be content with a small herd of about 10, my dad has double that. And unfortunately, my dad is not able to do all of the grain feeding that we do because of you, because of supporters. My dad doesn't grain feed. And so my dad's cows require every inch of grass that they have out there. So taking and talking to dad about dividing his pastures in half and giving me half for my animals would still have the double fence issue we still need a double fence for two mature bulls side by side and then we would also have the issue of not having enough grass for all of them so it's been a dilemma it's not something that i just jumped on a whim about this has been something that i've thought about for years and years long before i ever met you guys and um bringing in so many bigs you're gonna say well lester that's your own fault for allowing so many animals i can run i can run 10 animals in my 15 acre pasture i know that the back property here of my it's right at 15 acres it could run 10 animals but it cannot run so we so we are at our max if for some reason today if for some reason today joanne said lester close that gate we're not letting your animals back here anymore then what I would have to do is say, okay, and I would close the gate and our animals would be fine. Our cows and our horses would be fine. But that would mean that's, that's the end. There would be absolutely no more babies ever, rescues or, or anything else. And that would also require, you know, grain feeding year round, but we would do that already anyway. So we, that's why we cannot take on any more animals and we for sure wouldn't be able to ever take on any more without having more pasture land. So anyway, it's just something that I thought about for a while. And uh, I guess I made the other video a little bit premature and didn't explain all this to you guys. I probably could have done the entire thing in one video. 
and that would have saved you all of the questions. But hey, I do like the fact that you're thinking for me. I like the fact that in the comments, you're suggesting ideas for me. So thank you for that. And I hope this answered the reason of why it would not be wise for me to invest money in new fences, knowing that it would not, it would be eventual money that could, would be owned by somebody else. It would be giving away money and giving away amazing fences to somebody else. So, all right, guys, there you have it.